over there. It's the big one with all the blinking lights. Um, I'm from Detroit, Michigan. I, uh, I've been playing synths for about 10 years, about as long as I've been playing music. And uh, today I brought my Eurorack modular, a Korg MS-20 Mini, what I believe is the only set of Dutron Mr. Bassman bass pedals in America, and a Roland SH-2000 preset set. And hey, what are you playing right now? This is an original RA Moog uh, Model D Mini Moog. Owned by Michael Caloroso. Hey, hey! So uh, right now we're goofing around with the Korg MS20 Mini, working with a sample and hold patch on it. Seems to have taken it on a mind of its own. He's an eagle, Matoya. You killed my father. Prepare to die. I only heard him. I didn't kill him. <laughs> also known as Mike Colorado. What do you got here, Mike? Uh, I brought my um, Mini Move Model D. This is an RA Move from the early days of Truman Burke. Now, is this a soft synth or what? No, uh, it's a very hard synth. And um, over here is a signature edition Voyager. Is this a soft synth? And what's... What could this possibly be? Overheim OBX, restored. Calibrated, uh, expanded to seven voices, soon to be eight. And then over here? This is Zobaheim OBSX, also restored, calibrated. Has some modifications to it. Uh, I added a second LFO and these voice gates. So. We, so. Very cool. If you pull open the knob, the square wave. What's this other thing over here? Oh, it's with the silver. This Odeon. This is being on 1967 Fender Rose piano. Found us in store. Need some fixing up at the show. Yeah, I'm Sam Harmon from uh, Cleveland, Ohio. Um, let's see what I have. Uh, right now, I'm messing with this uh, MIDI arpeggiator called the Arky. So I've got uh, just MIDI notes coming from this controller yeah. keyboard and clock coming from my MPC. And it's spitting back out uh, an arpeggio into the MPC, which is then being routed to this uh, Shruti 1 mono sound. View system. Um, and as I said, as the uh, internet scuttlebutt goes, I need to gain 30 pounds and tie my hair in a ponytail in order to use it. But uh, it's here and it's in its grand glory. I've got. Uh, mess with it a little bit, but there's an arpeggiator going here. But I don't know why. Uh, somebody came up here and tweaked the patch. Hi, I'm Mike Cameron, and um, I'm here today with a 
I mean, most of my stuff, not all of my stuff. I kind of scaled it back a little bit this year. Um, a lot of Euro. Uh, my new like, briefcase that I uh, put together from a Harbor Freight um, briefcase. That's pretty much it. What's your newest module you've added? Um, newest thing is probably, I just finished this a couple weeks ago, the Anushri from Mutable Instruments, which is kind of fun. Yeah. It's kind of a self-contained like groove box with some drum sounds, uh, mono synth. It's a analog oscillators and filters with the digital. Um, there's a second digital oscillator if you choose to use it. Um, it's got the sub oscillator in it. Um, it's great. It's a cool little like massive playground um, that's kind of self-contained, and you really can use it alone. But it's also got some patch points that you can integrate some things with it. So um, it's a lot of fun. It responds and syncs to MIDI and, and all that good kind of stuff. So I'm I'm Bob from Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, play under the name of Fox Monkey. I do mostly experimental. Both electronic and electroacoustic stuff, and uh, start off making acoustic instruments actually. And so when I got on to electronic music, I started making electronic instruments as well. Um, what this rig is is the last year and a half of doing clones of the Buchla system. Uh, I'd always Actually, when I was here a few years ago, somebody had a uh, music easel, and I said, oh my gosh, that would be the best thing ever to have, but they... I think you were they, not the only person to ever say that. They, but they go, for, <laughs> they went for like fifteen to $20,000, in fact, and they never came up for sale, so um, when it became possible to start making clones of those, I said... Oh good, I'll, I'll, I'll make these the easel of my dreams that I've always wanted, and oh, while I'm waiting for that, maybe I'll just start building a couple of other modules to go along with it. So this is the, the easel, um, it's actually not the, it's half of an easel, it's just not the keyboard, but the, the uh, sound producing gut. Since I don't have the keyboard, I use a ribbon controller for that. And um, then these are clones of various modules or similar, similar looking but not exact clones. So there's a reverb module over there, but it's not the spring reverb of and there are some, a few, like this one here, which is a, a, a Ron Horger pop behind a Burkla panel. Uh, he's got a, he's got a sucker. Uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. It's clear. I'm uh, Tim Stoneberg. Uh, this is the uh, rig I brought here today. Got the JP4, Jupiter 4 running right now. Um, Nord G2 that I forgot to bring the power cord for. <laughs> um, and then over here I've got uh, pretty much all video sense stuff from LZX. Uh, don't have it fully patched up right now. It's running from here. It's a Zetterall V4 mixer. And modulating it in there. It'll be a little more interesting later in the day. Um, we'll come back. Then I've got the 5U rig also integrated in here. It's pretty much all sequencing in this part of the cab. And then this one is all the voices, so oscillators, vectors, filters, and such. And some nice cabinets. Yeah. Dovetail. Kind of a Buchla-esque a little bit. That's a good design. Yeah, so you can leave them patched and everything. Yeah. And then, uh, Cirque Line. The Cirque Line. Pretty much just doing bin sync for today. <laughs> so, load it in like that. And then when you put it... Oh, you need to reset it first. Mark. Okay, what's this thing? 
Which thing? <laughs> this white thing that's blinking. This is the Ectel Polygamist from Mass Instruments, a small instrument maker in Baltimore. There's about 30 in the world right now, although I really don't know how many he did in the second run. But if the first run was 15. And you can use it to control voltage or middle. MIDI one is just a sort of normal analog oscillator, but you've got a lot of control voltage options. You can put it on the ribbon. And the second one is interesting. It's analog additive. Uh, with a lot of uh, sub oscillators that create a lot of feedback, modulated by all the F all FOs. Only one envelope, but if uh, you want, you can patch in your modular or something else in there. Duophonic ribbon, uh, possibilities of great sound, unique, a lot of modulation. of disco on the Muff forums. Um, brought my little kind of starter.com system here. Basically it's kind of an expander for my Voyager. It's got a basic kind of two um, oscillator patch going in here. going into um, the fixed filter bank, which is going into the instrument interface, and then into the state variable filter bandpass, and then into the STG wave folder, and then back into the Voyager, into the stereo 104 delays. Field on the Muff Wiggler site. Uh, I deal with uh, basically the 5U with uh, .com or Moog format. Uh, what I have, I have a, actually it's an older .com keyboard. And what's interesting is it actually has a split and you can actually have two CB outs um, for you know, the bottom octaves. I'm actually controlling the Minotaur using CV. And then the top, I've got the, actually the modular. Actually, I have a, it's actually a ModCan 70B triple oscillator that I've redone into a dot .com format. Don't have a nice fancy panel for mystery, it yet. Mystery module. Yeah, exactly, mystery module. Uh, the rest of it are pretty much all commercially made. I've got a couple of Soon Tie Guys filter and his uh, VCA. Uh, I've got a, my, uh, I have a quad uh, AR generator, um, it's a hex inverter kit built by Analog Crafts. Hi, my name is Tony Clark and I'm from Great Lakes Modular. I'm here at the Analog Heaven Midwest 2014 show and this is my little modular that I brought to the, uh, the show which I designed back in 99 and in between then and 2004. Yeah, 
Yeah, these have been pictures of this been on the website. For, yeah, yeah. Okay. People always well, go, what is that? Larry, what is Larry, that? Larry's, that looks really cool. Larry's old site still has pretty good pictures of it. Uh, 
so then, you know, if you want to make it faster, um, I mean, that's as fast as we can go with that tempo. Um, so if we wanted to, you know, something like that, um, instead of uh, 24, we'll do 12. Oh, that was the wrong thing. <laughs> yeah, let us, let's, uh, let's start over here. This is annoying. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Yeah, thanks so much. Have fun. Nice. Hi, Matt, aka Sir Ruff, on my Fiddler, Vintage Stuff Explorer, and brought my favorite mono synth with me today, the EML 101. Kind of do it all. Yeah. Uh, mono synth just sounds amazing. And, uh, Thing that has replaced its former companion, which is was a EML 400 slash 401, which has now become the uh, Surge SQP and Creature, which actually forms a sort of one-to-one -one replacement in a lot of ways, but in a much more compact and, and more efficient and much more interesting yeah. setup. So uh, they don't really work together, but that's not that's that's sort of the point. That's pretty much like the CGS. Yeah, yeah, it's like the, um, also, metal, I guess, Metal Box, same thing, the step uh -huh. sequencer. I, although I can't remember, is that, uh, how many rows? I know it's eight steps, but I can't, I had one, I can't remember how many. It doesn't have a key, this little key thing here is pretty awesome, too. It's oh, I kind bet. of like a gate, keyboard. You yeah. kind of realize you only need, you only need as many keys as you're given. Right. In this case, I only need six. Um, but that's, that makes this a really nice performance device, um, kind of triggering off stuff. Um, I'm still getting to know this thing, too, but it's been a lot of fun. Introduce yourselves first. I'm, I'm Lisa Rollins, and um, this is my husband, Leslie Rollins. Hello there, I'm Leslie. She's my solderer. She's got the skill. I bring the looks to the package. I had some problems with this little kit, and so I brought it to AHMW for what them to it? fix it for me. What's it gonna do? Well, I had the two transistors, or two different transistors, and I had them switched. So we may have blown them, so it might not even work, but at least we're gonna give it a try. What's it supposed to do? Oh, uh, there's this is a little speaker that when it, you hear sound, then the LEDs light up. So we'll see. Pretty high tech. It's pretty high pressure soldering here <laughs> with all these experts around me. <laughs> Hi, I'm Scott Ryder. I'm sometimes known as the old pro. Uh, I've been coming to Animal Given Midwest here since 2001 or 2. It's hard to remember these days. Uh, last year I was here and Mike Calarosa brought his OBX and I was playing with it and saying I need the sound of this thing. So I look on eBay and you know I laugh at the prices of the broken ones. I decided I'll just make one. So I built enough of one, a four voice, fully manual. I call it the Crobiex, which is sitting over here. This is the single voice version here, but um, this very small front panel is designed to basically test the voice cards. I, after I made the front panel, I decided to make. Um, make it a version that mounts into your modular. So the controls are small but usable. And I gave enough patch points to use signals for other uh, uses. I mean, there's a full set of, uh, not on this one, but there's a full set of control voltages and gates, and LFOs and pitch bends and a couple audio outputs and external audio input, muting, you name it. Um, the actual four voice is literally four voice cards plugged in to a, uh, a back plane that is itself plugged into the uh, front panel and it is four individual synthesizers you need a gate and a control voltage for each uh, voice and using a MIDI converter or a synthesizer equipped with spare voltages and gates you have um, an expander sounds like an OBX because you know it is an OBX. <laughs> Introduce yourself. I'm John Sonnenberg and I brought this stuff. Did you ever get that patch back you lost when the power went out? No, no. And I'm making a new patch to supersede that one. 
And hopefully this new patch is going to just blow everybody's mind and everybody will forget that I ever lost a patch in the first place. That was a great loss. And <laughs> yes. All the minds of people in the world understand how you feel because it know. happens to everyone. I cried. I cried for you know, three days and three nights. The power goes out and all your patch cords fall out of the holes. Mm. Yeah, yeah, actually the patch cords didn't fall out of the holes. What happened was when the power went out, a filter and I made the sequencer around the same time and then um, soon after that I built this cabinet bought a couple more modules and I just had like two rows or, and I had cardboard taking up the rest of it just because I couldn't afford all the modules that I wanted at the time. The other thing I brought that was hidden in this corner I brought my cat stick which is I didn't really take it out but um, one thing that's cool about this is um, whoever had this sitting in their... I got this recently, and, it's, and it came new in the box with the warranty card. Because the guy that worked did you at... Send, did you send it in? No. The guy who worked at Octave Cat had um, a garage full of this stuff, and he just unloaded it about a year ago. Oh. And um, for tax reasons, he couldn't sell it up until last year. So it was this weird thing where, like, um, I actually didn't get this. Matt Rezo got two of them, and um, he knew that I was kind of looking for one and contacted me, and I'm like, yeah, of course I want the other one. Is it still available? But what's so cool about this is it's just a joystick, but each axis can have a voltage or it can have an LFO, and between one or two of the LFOs you can choose, so every direction has, has its own thing, plus every direction has its own VCA, so you can put noise or whatever you want into it and have each direction modulate the sound in a totally different way. Hi, I'm Suit and Tie Guy. And what'd you bring today? Um, a pile of stuff. A pile of stuff. I came over and had pictures of it before. What are these things with the funky, funky knobs? Um, Oscillators. Those are EMS VCOs. These prototypes. Yep. So this is like their. This is like the uh, first time they've ever been out in public. Nope. Oh. Oh. Okay. All right. Oh. <laughs> I thought we had a scoop or something. No, no. sorry. <laughs> and the envelope things too. This is the first time I've gone somewhere and not brought any load format stuff at all. That's a scoop. <laughs> but I, I just didn't want to disturb the stuff that I had set up at home. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. 